So if there's one thing that game maker users love doing, it's arguing with each other about what kinds of code are faster than other kinds of code. And over the years, there have been many, many like informal benchmarking projects that people have thrown together to test exactly this sort of thing. I have contributed a number of them myself over the years. And a few weeks ago, I decided to, uh, to put in a little bit of time and make something a little bit fancier and a little bit more, um, hopefully with a bit of a broad appeal uh, to anyone who's interested in doing this kind of thing. Uh, this is the Game Maker Benchmark tool. So um, if you want to look at this project yourself, I will have a link to the GitHub repository where it lives down in the description of the video. Um, I actually put effort into making this like properly an open source project, unlike some of my other projects, which are just kind of like the sources there, but I'm not really paying attention to pull requests. Um, if you take an interest in this kind of thing and you feel like contributing, um, go ahead. This is a little program with a little graphical user interface that I am going to be um, going to be using to test different kinds of game maker code against each other. And uh, keeping in the uh, the spirit of things, I think there is no better um, example to show this off with than everybody's favorite thing to argue about within the realm of game maker performance, and that is what kind of loop is fastest. Uh, so if I just select this one in the benchmarks list and hit run benchmarks, that's going to take a second to run. And we're going to have some results here. And we can see that using a repeat loop over an array uh, comes in fastest to do the same amount of work, uh, followed by what I have named for overcached array size. I will explain exactly what that means in a minute. Uh, while overcached array size, for over array size, and while over array size. And you can see the, uh, the relative performance of each of these... Uh, strategies for looping over an array uh, stacked up against each other. So we have ourselves a fancy bar graph uh, with the, um, the test code that uh, took the least amount of time to run uh, over here on the right and all the other ones next to it. You can see some other, some other readouts down here at the bottom uh, relating to performance. Um, you can uh, click on the, uh, the data display to see some other uh, data visualizations. This basically flips it on its head. So percentage wise, how does it stack up? We have the uh, the number of operations per millisecond. I'm not entirely convinced that this is a useful metric because in the real world, in your games, you're going to be doing a ton of other things and operations per millisecond doesn't really mean anything, but it's kind of cool, I guess. And also we have ourselves a, a pie chart, which I personally like and a lot of other benchmarking people think is kind of useless. And honestly, I do agree that it's kind of useless, but I still like the pie chart anyway, because it's, it's interesting. Hardcore benchmarking people will tell you that if you're going to do something like this, you should generally run uh, more than one trial and you should randomize the trials and you should also make sure that they like run in different orders uh, known as interleaving just to iron out any random statistical fluctuations that will happen from your computer doing something in the background and throwing off the results of um, one or more of the, uh, of the individual trials. Uh, you can also specify exactly how many iterations to run it for. Uh, generally, you will want to do a uh, run a large number of iterations for these so that, um, again, iron out any statistical noise that will come from, um, let's say that like your antivirus kicks in in the background at some point in the middle of one of the tests. So how this works, if you want to mess around with this for yourself, um, what you're probably concerned with is going to be in the gm underscore benchmark file. Uh, this is going to just uh, simply define an array containing a number of benchmark tests, which you might recognize from the list over here. So we have global collections, we have dot products. Uh, the, uh, the one that I'm interested in today is going to be fast loops, uh, different ways of iterating over arrays. So each benchmark is going to have a name and it's going to have an array of test cases that you might want to run. Uh, each of the test cases is going to be a, uh, a struct with a name, a function, which is going to be the main like benchmarking function, which is what's going to be timed um, by, by game maker. And it is uh, optionally going to take a setup function that will run at the beginning in case there's anything that you need to set up, uh, for a benchmark to work, such as to allocate in an array like this. And when you click the, uh, when you click the run benchmark button, uh, the program will, uh, it'll run the initialization function if there is one, and then it'll run the, uh, the actual benchmarking function. And that is what is going to be timed and, um, and have all the fun data collected about it and that kind of thing. Both the initialization function and the uh, the benchmark function itself is going to take a, a, a parameter for the number of iterations that you're running over. Uh, depending on exactly what you're testing, you may want to throw that in a repeat loop and just throw whatever code you're testing inside the repeat loop. Or if you're doing something involving, for example, setting up an array, you might want to um, use the iteration size in the uh, 
in the initialization function in some way so that you can pre like pre-allocate any any data and that won't have to take time away from the actual benchmark uh, itself. Uh, in this case, in the case of loops, we are going to iterate over the array in different ways. Um, everybody's favorite, the repeat loop. In other cases, such as comparing uh, the runtime versus manual dot products, you might simply uh, write out the, uh, the result of those calculations inside the repeat loop. If you're looking for other ideas of what you might use this for, uh, there are a, a number of... Um, of tests that already exist in this uh, this benchmark file that you might want to run. Okay. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty much it. If you need to define any additional like functions or anything, uh, you can do that wherever you want. You can do that at the bottom of the benchmark scripts, at the bottom of the like the benchmark main file down here, uh, so that it's out of the way. Uh, you can throw it in the benchmark helper code code file, uh, such as this manual string split function. Um, I believe that's another test uh, that is in, in here. If I were to run this, this will take longer because it's um, doing a little more work than iterating over an array, but hopefully it'll uh, it'll run and it won't be won't be sitting here forever. Okay, I ended up having to sit there for a long time and I decided that I wasn't gonna wait for it. So this brings me to the Suggest Iterations button down here. Um, this will run a brief a brief benchmark um, on, on whatever the selected benchmark is. And it'll try to predict how many iterations uh, you might want to shoot for if you want a test to complete in say about a second or so. Uh, so if I, were to, um, if I were to hit Suggest Iterations for a string splitting, which is either going to be with the, uh, the manual function like this or with GameMaker's new built-in uh, string split function. Um, and comparing the results, we are going to not run this nearly as many times as we would have run some of the other tests because uh, these are much more expensive operations. Namely, uh, doing the string split yourself is significantly more expensive than the built-in version by an order of magnitude. And uh, this will actually scale even, even harder if your string is, uh, is longer. So if you have code like this that you're not entirely sure um, how many times, like how exactly slow it's, it's going to be or how long a benchmark it's going to take and you don't want to risk having to wait for five minutes uh, waiting for it to complete, uh, you can hit the Suggest Iterations button and it will try to predict a reasonable number. Let's see, any other fun ones that I might just want to show on, um, on recording? I think, uh, did I have one for matrix multiplication? I have one for multiplying a matrix uh, by a vector with matrix transform vertex. Uh, that's always fun. Let's run that. Uh, this code isn't as expensive as string splitting, so we can uh, run it a few more times than string split. And we can see that a uh, matrix transform vertex handily beats uh, doing the math yourself. Uh, one thing that this benchmark tool does not take into account is any time that it might take the garbage collector to run if you're doing something like um, allocating a bunch of structs or arrays that have to be garbage collected later on. Uh, that is beyond the scope of this test because the garbage collector kind of runs on its own time in GameMaker. And I don't really know of a good way to performance test that, aside from just like doing this every frame and seeing what like the garbage collector time and the debug overlay is. But just something to keep in mind. And uh, lastly, of course, you can run this in the Yoyo compiler and the results are usually not too different. The proportions are usually not too different um, between uh, different types of code in Virtual Machine versus Yo-Yo Compiler. In certain math-heavy things, they obviously will be, so uh, I would expect the gap to close quite a bit in matrix multiplication test um, in YYC versus, uh, versus VM, but probably considerably less so when it comes to things like loops or um, or things of that nature. So that took a minute to, uh, to build. I'm going to run the uh, the loops benchmark. And uh, again, the proportions are the same. Repeat over array actually gained quite a bit of ground over uh, the uh, the while and the four over array size in this test, but it's not like uh, it's not like repeat was suddenly slower in YYC or anything like that. If I were to do um, matrix by vector, uh, we can run that. And again, the proportions are similar. Doing the math yourself gained a little bit of ground on using matrix transform vertex uh, like this, but um, 
It's not like Matrix Transform Vertex suddenly became like heinously slow in uh, in YYC or anything like that. I'm interested in seeing how this is going to uh, to work out uh, when Game Maker's new runtime drops, since that will be uh, building your games in a very different way uh, than we're doing right now. But that's not going to be uh, happening for a while. But when the uh, the new runtime does eventually drop, I'm sure that uh, people are going to be looking at this sort of thing with interest. All right. So one thing this does not do is it will not tell you why something is faster or slower than, um, like it will not tell you why uh, certain kinds of code are faster or slower. Uh, there are ways if you're using the virtual machine or the Yo-Yo uh, compiler that you can kind of look at exactly what code is being executed by the game maker runner, either by uh, investigating the generated C++ by YYC or looking at the, uh, the actual virtual machine bytecode. But that is going to be a subject for another day. Um, I would kind of like to talk about those eventually. I do plan on um, referencing this benchmark tool in the nearest future when I uh, get to the end of the 3D Collisions and Game Maker series when I talk about optimizations and different optimization strategies that may or may not be worth it. We'll see what the future holds. Again, if you want to, uh, to play around with this yourself or if you want to um, not... Not that. If you want to like make any modifications and submit it as a pull request, uh, feel free. There is actually an outstanding pull request that uh, I have been uh, saying that I'm going to be getting back to. I believe this is Manta Ray in the Discord uh, for several days, and I keep forgetting, and I really need to do that. But yeah, my name is Michael. I like Wizards and Dragons and making games. I hope you all find this sort of thing useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Syndra Larson, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, DJ Gibbles, and Army Armbuster for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.